Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are from all over the world. I'm Dr. Bomanis, I'm the director of Academy, and uh, Dr. Vas Taras, who is the founding president of X Culture, is um, will be joining us momentarily. I will be emceeing um, the presentations today, and uh, welcome everybody. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, we are running uh, smoothly. We do have uh, eight presentations today, and uh, we're going to do it in a very systematic way. But before, um, before we continue, uh, let me just say that it's been such a, an amazing semester. I know my team have worked very hard to get to where we are today, and, and I'm, I'm very, very proud of them. Uh, just to uh, reiterate what we've had to go, on, go through this semester um, for the university students, it's a, uh, I believe for you guys, it's been an eight week run with Academy, or I'm sorry, with X Culture. And for uh, Academy students, it's been a 14 week run um, because the, the Academy students have to do some preliminary work. Whereas the university students, you start uh, with your faculty, with your professors um, for a, a complete eight week uh, program. Um, I do wanna remind everybody that for the Academy students, we do have our farewell get together, uh, our farewell event next week. So uh, we hope to see you there. And uh, just to make an announcement of who will be presenting today, um, we have uh, team number 148, Nova Brink, Brazil. Team number 700, the Finnish school from Finland. Team number 702, Radiko from India. Team 712, Zen CV from Serbia. Uh, of course, uh, Team 713, X Culture Academy. We really needed you to help us there. Uh, team number 59, Cap Source, the United States. Uh, team 691 for Troitsky Most from Russia. And then also team number 161. So we have two of them, 691 and 161 for Troitsky Most. Um, from Russia. So congratulations, everybody who, uh, who corked up, who surfaced as among the best um, uh, presentations. And I, I want to tell you that our ambassadors, or I'm sorry, our, our coaches did a super job in evaluating the presentations. And they did, I mean, the, my team and, and the kids or the students that actually spent like precious time evaluating each and every one of those presentations, one, uh, were very um, conscientious about what they were measuring. And then two, were very um, amazed at the, the abilities that our students have around the world that they can do this kind of presentation at the university or at the executive level um, for these organizations. So congratulations. Um, at this point, I don't think that there is, I, I think you're all winners. If you made it to this point, you're all winners. Um, and uh, I just want to let you know that wherever you're going to go for the rest of your life, these life skills are going to take you places. So really, really appreciate what you've accomplished. Really um, take it to heart that you've made, um, you've grown by leaps and bounds and that you've made amazing friends all over the world. And by the way, I hope that you guys take your friends with you wherever you go, because like I said, right, it's, it's not always what you know, it's also who you know, right? So make sure that um, you take your time to in, in invest on those relationships. So um, Dr. Vas Terras, please join us. Yes, just for a second, um, uh, a scheduling conflict. My wife is graduating right now, so she's uh, going to walk in the gown and a cap on that stage in a few minutes. But I wanted to say a uh, great semester. Thank you everyone for your hard work. Good luck with your presentations. And a huge thank you to Dr. Leilani Baumanis and her team for managing this project this semester so very well. So good luck to all of you and thank you. And just before we start, thank you Vas. Uh, if you are part of 
uh, any of the teams that were mentioned, uh, please uh, rename your name on Zoom. Put your number at first so we can identify you, okay? And also, yes. uh, I'd like to invite uh, the companies. So if there are any uh, represented for the companies, please raise your hand. And also, if we have teachers, can you please raise your hand so we can add you as a panelist so you can uh, do some, uh, ask some questions to the students and also uh, make some comments on the presentation. Yep. Yeah. So um, again, if you are a team that's presenting, put your three numbers in front of your name. So you'll have to go and rename yourself by adding the first three numbers uh, your, the first three letters as your team number so that we can uh, easily identify you guys. And if you could just raise your hand as a professor or as a company so that we can identify you that well as well. Uh, also, keeping in mind that we do have a seven minute limit, that rhymes, seven minute limit <laughs> for your presentation, followed by a three minute question and answer. Uh, and then at the end of each presentation, there will be a polling so that uh, we can uh, identify the, again, everybody's a winner, right? But there's always going to be one or two or three that, that's going to shine. So welcome to all of the faculty here. I, I see that we have uh, Professor Anna Kolovic, um, uh, Levi Pita, Professor Levi Pita, uh, Professor Sherry Huang, um, welcome. And uh, thank you so much for uh, being here with us. So let's start, um, Raphael, let's go ahead and find our first um, presenter so that we can get set, it, set up. Yeah, actually it's Sherry Huang, He's the, she is the student of uh, one for ah, years. But okay. I, I, okay. I promote her right now. So is Sherry gonna be our first speaker? Yeah. Hi, Sherry. Okay, you you. See, this, is, this is how I got confused because we said numbers for students, right? So if you're a student, please make sure that you put your number in front of your name so that we know that you're a student and then the professors will um, just have their full names, okay? So without further ado, uh, welcome Sherry and congratulations, here you go. Okay, okay, you guys hear me? Yes, yes we can. So let me share my screen. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good night to all professors and attendees. My name is Sherry Huang and I'm from track 1B, team 148. And um, the company that our team chose to do the presentation um, proposal for is Nova Brink. So Nova Print is a toy making company with an experience of over 70 years and it sells toys under two brands, Rosita and Baby Brink. And this is their uh, mission. And so what does the company want? The company is already having a really successful business in Brazil and is ready for a global expansion, which brings us to the purpose of writing this proposal. So first of all is the market. The target, target audience that we set is um, children from age two to eight. And for the customer, we set it as the children's parents since they're the one who has the ability to, to purchase the product. So these are um, the listed nine companies as the competitors. So these nine companies are the top nine revenue earners in global toy and doll industry. However, the combined market share of these company only take place for 22.5%, while the other 77.5% um, of the market share is distributed among other companies, which means that there is no company dominating the market, giving Nova Brink a bigger opportunity to enter the industry. So this is the SWOT analysis, but due to time consideration, I can't go over every single point. So the new market that we suggest Nova Brink to go into is Canada for two main reasons. One is because Canada has a really good economy and also Canada is less competitive since the listed competitors are mostly located in the United States. So now I'm gonna talk about the analysis in different aspects. So first is demographic aspects. So the number 
average number of people in a family in Canada is three, which means that most families in Canada has、um, children. And for the degree of urbanization, Canada has、uh, 81.48 percent,、um, which is relatively high, suggesting that Canada is、uh, more developed and has a good economy. And for economic aspects, Canada is ranked 13 in disposal income per capita, which is the amount of money、um, a family can spend on. For political aspects, Canada provides free trade for Brazil, Brazil, and Brazil is also Canada's third largest trading partner. So, with these two information, it can be in,、uh, easily inferred that Nova Brain can enter the Canada market easily in terms of trading. So these are some competitors that Novabring might face a、uh, meet in Canada, and these、um, companies are mostly well known in the globe. However, Novabring has the advantage of only selling those, which gives it a specific market, and it also has agreement with other global brands such as Disney. Next is the marketing. So we suggested four possible promotion promotion channels, as for. Facebook and Instagram is because they're、um, well-known social media platforms, and for YouTube is because Novabring already has a YouTube channel, so they can continue their promotion、um, with YouTube. And for TikTok is because the number of TikTok user is rising, especially in、um, among children group, and Novabring can also partner partner with TikTok influencers to promote their products even more. For the message, we design "Doll for All" as the、um, slogan for Nova Brink. So, "All" stands for award, lead, and level because Nova Brink has won various、um, awards with their dolls, and also Nova Brink is dedicated to be an innovative company to lead the toy industry, and also because Nova Brink cares about the quality of its products and dedicated to remain the high level or standard. So for promotional material, we design it a Instagram post and also a poster with our slogans on it, and also the toys that Nova Brink sells. Last but not least is the operation management. So we suggest Nova Brink to partner up with local retailers such as Walmart, since it is already having partnership with Walmart back in Brazil. But and for Costco is because Costco is the nation's number one, at、uh, the largest、um, retailer. And also be,、um, for Amazon is because Canadian utilize Amazon daily. So Novabring can also partner up with distributors such as Kid Toy because it has experience for over sixty five years and has、um, done successful collaboration with international businesses. In addition, Canada Canadian prefer online shopping to in person shopping, which is a really good. Big advantage for Nova Brink because Nova Brink does does have offer online shopping, so it will be a really big advantage for Nova Brink when they enter the Canada market. So last is the pricing strategy. We suggest Nova Brink to do、um, to implement competitive pricing, so that the customer will view Nova Brink's product in a as a higher quality compared to their com、um, competitors. But before that, Nova Brink should lower their price and、um, offer discounts to penetrate the market, and to create a、um, customer base and customer loyalty, and later on increase the price. And such strategy is called penetration price、um, penetration pricing. It's and it is used especially when the market is having a really big competition. So、um, over. So in sum, we suggest Nova Brink to enter Canada as the new market due to Canada's economy and also、um, its big market. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Congratulations, Sherry. How old are you?、Um, I'm seventeen. And what country? Taiwan. Taiwan. Amazing, amazing! Congratulations.、Um, just a couple of things from me, and then、uh, I think we'll open it up to the faculty. Right?、Um, 
when I was 17, coming from the Philippine Islands where, you know, English is not my first language, right? like I couldn't have done what you just did. So incredible skills. Uh, just a little bit of suggestion for you. And this is because I've been a professor for 22 years. This will improve your presentation skills tremendously. Sit upright and breathe, okay? Because when you sit upright and breathe, it gives that flow of air coming on and it makes you a little calmer, right? Also try not to rush and, and I know this is hard because we're all like put, trying to push out our information, right? But try not to rush through your conversation because it, then the audience looks at you and you appear calm, even though you're crazy in the inside, right? You just will appear calm and, you know, sit back and allow that, that, that breath to come through. But you have excellent presentation skills. You're, you're gonna do great in your future. So I'm gonna open it up for the faculty. Uh, Professor Kalonik. Also, uh, first, can we talk with Levi? Levi, he, he's from uh, Nova Brim. Okay. Oh, he perfect. May, Congratulations may... Uh, for, for being a part of our um, challenge company. Thank you so much for um, being a, a part of our X culture family. We really enjoyed your project. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, man, first of all, man, hi guys. Uh, I, I, I know I look a young guy. Actually, I'm, I'm not a young guy. I'm plus 30. <laughs> I'm 34 years old. I work for Nova Brink, uh, but uh, we are in this project because I was part of X culture in 2019 when I was a student then I like very much to, to be at this project and I su uh, suggested to my boss to the company be part of the project this year he was okay with that and we like we liked very much the, the feedback and Cherry seriously I'm very impressed I'm very impressed congratulations you were very very good I'm I really, I'm a little bit scary that you are just 17. <laughs> really, yeah, you have, you got talent. Really, you you got talent. Congratulations, you have made a, an amazing job for our company. Uh, we have never thought about Canada. We will consider it, okay, because uh, that's a very good market as you shared to us. And I'm very happy for your job, really. Congratulations. And good Thank luck you. for your career, really. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's it. Thanks so much for the opportunity and good luck for the other team. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we'll open it up for questions. Comments and if, before uh, and uh, talk, I will uh, launch a poll so you guys can vote on the quality of the presentation, okay? Just let me get here. Okay, you. We all can vote now. Can you please share your comments, Anna? Yes, thank you very much, Sherry. It was really a great presentation. And I think it's not easy because you have very little time, right, to summarize your report. Uh, I have a question regarding the cultural difficulties that you might think could appear for Nova Brink if uh, it enters the Canadian market. Have you thought about that a little bit? Okay, so first of all, because the culture, the culture aspect is um, actually not the part that I did, but I went over it and for the culture part, the person who um, wrote, our team member who wrote um, this part, basically um, analyzed the good part about the Canada, uh, Canada culture. So including that Canadian really cares about their family. So, um, which is especially, uh, which is really important for Nova Brink since the target market or the audience is, for them is the family because of the children. And also um, there's also one part that Canada Canadians um, can have a straightforward conversation. And um, a, a, um, a, as long as the uh, conversation can be really polite. 
But other than the good um, cultural norms in Canada, um, the analysis we did didn't actually mention about um, the negative part. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, I think we are gonna move on to the next team. Uh, which is uh, team number team number seven hundred, uh, the Finnish schools from Finland. Um, but before you go, uh, Mr. Peter, thank you so much, Levi. And exciting that you were one of our students. I was probably one of your professors. Um, I don't know if you. I was okay, but uh, congratulations and and you. you know landing your company and then you know coming back to us to allow us to help you grow it and we we would love to continue to be a part of your journey. So thank you so much. I thank you most okay. once again for the opportunity. Thank you okay, so much. It's our pleasure, really. Okay, so let's uh, bring on uh, team number seven hundred. Uh, Raphael, how are you doing? Okay, wait a minute. 700. Team number 700, Finnish schools from Finland. I don't see any 700. Are you guys there? Can you please raise your hand? I have two participants. If you at least raise your hand, please, so that we can bring you on. Okay, three. Uh -huh. Is okay. anybody else? Yes, we have three members. Okay, so who, who are they? Um, Joanne and Nadia. Okay, Joanne and Nadia. So, um, Raphael, if you can demote, uh, take off the panelists, some yes. of the people from the panelists from the previous so that we're not um, all confused. It is. And then uh, do you have the representative for the Finnish schools or not? If you are a uh, representative for the Finnish schools, please raise your hand so we can bring you on as well. And then we'll let the, the team get started. <clears throat> okay, so- who, who, uh, who else I need you at here? So I have Amalie Luyanda. Amalie just raised her hand, there she goes, okay. So, and um, let's go ahead and get started. And whoever is starting this presentation, please introduce your team. Okay. So hello everyone. My name is Amrita Srivastava and today I, along with Joanne and Nadia will represent our team's work. Our client company is FSI Go, which stands for Finnish School International Go Global Online. FSI is a company that aims to bring the world renowned Finnish school system to the rest of the world. Because of COVID, schools were affected all around the world, and this experience triggered the initiative of launching a fully digital online school, FSI Go. So let's not waste our time and start discussing our work. These are our team members, Joanne, Samridhi, Nadia, Kiran, Aisha, Fazir, and Amale. So as Sam just mentioned, our client company is FSI Go. So giving a brief summary of our presentation, we will first analyze FSI Go's competitors, then introducing the market that we suggest, which is Singapore. And then we will recommend ways for FSI to promote and advertise in a new market, suggesting on the market entry and pricing strategies. Lastly, we will determine the certifications required to start operations in Singapore. Yep, starting off with the market analysis, the team conducted a competitive position analysis on EDX, which is an online platform offering university level courses. We chose EDX as one of the main competitor because it offers thousands of courses ranging from six core topics. Through this SOAR analysis, we found that FSI has the competitive advantage of having local teachers present to guide and interact with the students. We decided that the vital criteria for market selection are fast internet connection, drive for education, as well as the presence of pressure on students. Using the listed criteria as a baseline, we chose Singapore. We wanted FSI to be able to effectively and efficiently operate in our chosen market. And based on the listed reasons, we found that Singapore fits all three criteria and can help FSI smoothly operate. To better understand the market climate of Singapore, we further analyzed the market. 
Uh, I would like to point out that for political factors, the government is constantly pushing for the improvement of the country's education system. Also for cultural factors, it is important to plan a system to ensure students are focused during curriculum times. For section two marketing, um, so for promotional channels, let's first look at promotion strategy. In order to effectively promote FSI's program, the promotions must target parents as they are the ultimate decision maker. Through our research, we found that Facebook and Google paid search engine optimization would be the best effective promotion channels. We chose Facebook because we found it's the most popular social network accessed by our parents. And uh, so it would be a great platform to reach out to them. Google paid search. Paid search allows your ads to be shown above organic search results, making them more visible to users. Ads can be target uh, consumers based on their demographic. So next for the message we would like to convey to our target customers, which are Singaporean parents, we are planning to give a slogan that plays with the abbreviation of Finnish School International, which would be Fly, Sell and Ignite. So for FLY, we would like to convey our promise of FSI student success. And SAIL indicates the global experience FSI offers. And lastly, IGNITE suggests that FSI students with their great potentials and abilities will be able to ignite a successful future and career. For promotion material, social media posts, through this picture, we can see that different children are shown attending online school. Then uh, students are shown um, doing uh, music lessons and uh, on being engaged in virtual science experiment and also students are seeing watching lecture videos and also discussing with classmates on a topic. So for promotional materials, we can post few lectures on YouTube so that parents can preview our teaching style and it will also assure them that it is trustworthy uh, for enrollment. Then FSI Go will be at the most advantage for those uh, who are unable to attend schools regularly because of some personal reasons or have to often uh, transfer schools, then we can provide them recorded lectures so that if anyone who has missed their classes or wants to revise it, they can. We can also add interaction classes, some counseling sessions also once a week. And for advertisement, we can hire a well-known professor or teachers along with some international and excellent students for advertisement and people will believe in our brand then and also we can give them demo sessions before enrollment and in demo sessions we can uh, we have to try to ex uh, explain our terms and services and today there is much more competition so if we don't use these methods to approach uh, then our competitors will and our business will suffer as a result. Um, so for operations management, we recommend forming alliances with local entities in Singapore. Since this is the first time FSI is entering the Singaporean market, the company has not yet gained a reputation among the locals. Hence, FSI can benefit through cooperation with investors, which include Singapore's Ministry of Education and the Singapore Association of Private Education. They both already have a good reputation and credibility among Singaporean parents and are already active investors and sponsors in education advancements. So because they already hold professional experience and knowledge in the country, they can help improve FSI's impression among the locals and they can provide guidance to adapt to Singapore's education system. Next page. And for other local partnerships, again, we recommend the Ministry of Education as well as local government schools and local private schools. For the Ministry of Education, in return to their support, FSI can help them achieve their goals of providing a more enriched education for students. Or for local government schools, we can campaign to the graduating primary and secondary students to consider choosing FSI as their secondary or tertiary school. Lastly, for local private schools, we can cooperate through periodical exchange programs to increase exposure to different teaching models. And other partnerships for recruitment would be LinkedIn and the National Institute of Education. We know that FSI already has its own international teacher team, yet we believe that recruiting some of the local teachers and human resources can help guide FSI into a local education system as the teacher are more familiar with Singapore's conditions. Yeah, so for pricing, we suggest a fixed price of 3000 Singapore dollar um, per semester as an average household income in Singapore is uh, 48000 Singapore dollar per year. 
Thus, the fixed price would be a reasonable, reasonable tuition fee. We conducted a survey to gather insights of opinions on online schooling and FSI's Go appeal. And 31 out of 35 parents and 134 out of 159 parents said that they believe a uh, $3,000 is an acceptable price. However, to cater to less financially income families, we suggest having ad uh, additional financial support such as scholarships. We can provide scholarships uh, by holding online exams. Then we can provide some EMI or loan. And also we can give them some additional discounts. For example, if uh, after demo sessions, we can give them two to three days to think. And if they take enrollment at that time, we can provide additional 2% discount this will bring pressure to the buyer and chances of taking enrollment will be more. Next, certification. To register FSI as an official academic, several certifications are required to be more credible and trustworthy. Um, certificates for students will be academic certificate, then overall development certificate, then certificate for winning competitions and participation certificates. Yep, thank you so much for your kind attention. Do let us know if you have any questions and we will answer them to the best of our abilities. If you could stop sharing, please, girls. All right. Again, amazing. Okay, so how old are you guys and what countries do you come from? Um, I'm 16 years old and I'm from India. Uh, I'm 16 years old and I'm from Singapore. I'm 16 and I'm from Taiwan. Wow. So you guys have been my student this entire semester. And my, my coaches, my, my uh, senior coaches are the ones that get the privilege of getting to know you amazing people. Wow. I'm so impressed. Um, first of all, your presentation skills, on point. Like for 16-year-olds, on point. Um, but the quality of your presentation was also very well done. Um, I really liked how you analyzed uh, the Singaporean market. I, I'm from the Philippines, so I get it. Uh, I'm, I'm from Asia. So we, we have a tendency to focus a lot on the value of education. And I really think that you guys hit it right on the mark saying that Singapore is the right, Joanne, you're from Singapore, so you probably already know that this is something that could be very well done. Do we have anybody from the Finnish school here? Yeah, so this is definitely a video, Raphael, that we need to send them because I think that they would probably be interested in, in having this as a part of their, um, their uh, up choice, right? Yeah. So Professor Kolovic, do you have anything to say to the girls? Oh, just to congratulate them. This is really a, a wonderful presentation, very informative, uh, very well structured. They were at ease when they spoke. Yes. Fantastic presentation. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. yes. I will set the poll so everyone can vote. Okay. okay. Launch polling. And I'll be starting to promote the other team so we can. Yes, so on. our next team is going to be Radiko from India, team 702. So um, uh, Raphael, if you can um, promote these attendees, raise your hand if you're in that team. Um, and then we'll also remove uh, people from the panel who uh, is not needed now. And uh, after that is send CV. So if you're send CV, don't raise your hand yet, but get ready, okay? Did you guys see the poll? Yep, the polling okay. is happening. And um, so we'll give it another 10 seconds, Raphael, and then I think you can end it. It's a one minute okay. poll. Okay. Five more seconds to poll. Go ahead and end it, Raphael. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the next team, if you are here, um, yeah, prepare your presentation. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Just a second. 
uh, every member of the team is here already? Yes. So you guys can start. Awesome, Chair. So welcome professors and esteemed guests. Here we present our action plan in form of a framework to help Radical launch and establish itself in our new endorsed market, Indonesia. We, the team 702, myself Vedan from India, Ellen from Germany, Kitties from Ethiopia, Jatin from Singapore, Emily from Taiwan, and Ahmed from Egypt, bring this for Radical, a promising 100% organic hair color brand. So let's understand the roadmap of our findings. First, we'll go to the key characteristics of our product and our suggested market via SWOT. Then comes the marketing strategy. And finally, we'll look through the ways to enter and manage our enterprise there. So looking at the SWOT of Radico, we found the key strength of Radico to be its certifications. So we choose our market such a way to make the use of the strength the most. Our primary weakness comes at large scale marketing and we have proposed a great marketing plan to tackle this out. One of our great opportunities is the growth of global hair color market at an compound annual growth rate of even more than 8%, even during the pandemic. However, fluctuating custom duties and trade regulations can be a threat for Radico. So we took care of that when we selected a new market. So to choose a new market for Radico, we found that regionally, Asia Pacific region is projected to dominate the market at even more than 11% growth rate. On the other hand, Europe and North America hair color markets are expected to witness a steady growth owing to uh, market saturation. Considering many such factors, we analyzed several powerful markets such as Australia, Brazil, China, and Indonesia. And uh, due to some exceptional benefits that we foresee, we choose Indonesia. So let's get a deeper understanding why Indonesia from Ahmed. The reasons for choosing Indonesia are as shown. First, the statical and demographic factors. Indonesia had the fourth largest population, around 270 million people, with one of the biggest hair care markets in the world. Second, culture and the political conditions. Having the largest Muslim majority, over 87% of the population, Indonesia demands all products to get halal certified, and Radico already fulfills the requirements. Third, legal and economical benefits. The salary for a typical individual is almost $850 per month, which is an alignment with our pricing strategy. Thus, there will be a high demand market. Fourth, customer behavior and competition. There has been a tremendous growth of luxury and beauty products in Indonesia due to the impact of social media. We conducted a potential customer survey and found that the major complaint that the customer have is damage to hair, which Radical solves completely due to its unique selling propositions like its repair and care to hair. And thus, it would get an upper hand in its competitors in Indonesia. So let's now hear from Jatin about the marketing strategies. Here are our main suggestions for Radical on which social media platforms and strategies to use for their promotion. We suggest using various social media apps based on the target audiences dominating the respective platforms. So over on Instagram and YouTube, being the most popular platforms in Indonesia, Radical must target the younger audience with videos in Bahasa and use hashtags such as hashtag new organic meat or hashtag naturally bold. Whereas on Facebook, we suggest that Radical use Facebook ads and adjust the page to a rather mature audience. Finally, WhatsApp and Line are great to personalize reaching out to salon owners and stores, as well as close deals to buy our products in bulk. The suggested budget and detailed social media strategy can be found in our full report. Let's hear about the other marketing strategies from Ellen. Yeah, so there are additionally three other marketing strategies. Starting off with influencer marketing, influencer reviews are actually found more convincing than official ads and celebrity recommendations by 51% of Indonesians. Also, the return on investment is $5.2 for every dollar invested. Therefore, we suggest Radico to have multiple micro to small sized influencers posting in a logical pattern to raise the awareness. Also, we suggest using Google Ads to make the best use of Indonesia's most famous search engine based on the idea of keywords from the website and campaigns. This is especially necessary as Radico lacks at their SEO optimization. The payment is pay-per-click, so you only pay when you actually profit from the ad. Lastly, we can use Indonesia's popular e-commerce sites such as Tokopedia and Kaskis. Upon registering, Radica will have access to more than 20 business forums, 
to build a very good consumer following. Finally, we designed two sample promotional posters. The Instagram sample post is rather youth oriented, signaling easiness, natural beauty, and both rather Southeast Asian appearance characteristics. While the Facebook sample post targets the rather mature potential customers. Still, both posts challenge the viewer to actually interact with the brand's campaign. Now, the proposed new packaging not only has a different background and Bahasa language, but also its halal certificates, which Radical has, but playing a greater role for the suggested market. Now, let's understand the management section with Emily. Thanks, Ellen. We asked her two main ways to penetrate the Indonesian market successfully. The first entry mode we suggest radical is franchising to gain control over operations through local business owners in Indonesia. The second simultaneous entry mode we suggest radical for online entry is experting. In direct experting, we suggest radical to sell goods and services through intermediaries like a business to business online platform, Alibaba. The other method of experting is direct experting to end users. We recommend radical to use online markets, especially Shopee. Indonesia's leading distributor is VT.Binco. The highlight of convincing the distributor is to make the product seem profitable. Some strategies we provided are listed on the slides. The best shipping method we believe is use DHL shipping to ship directly to consumers since the speed is fast and it provides package tracking services as well as payment methods can be done easily with MyBill, which you can choose multiple methods to pay with. The custom duties in Indonesia are pretty low, which is around 10%. Since Radical will be entering a new market, based on our analysis, we recommend competition-based pricing for its products. The suggested pricing is around 220,000 Indonesian dollar. We also suggest book pricing when dealing with for, for, uh, wholesalers and franchises. And other strategies like voucher discounts, loyalty programs, and contests are all very famous in Indonesia. And this sums up our major suggestions for management. Thank you so much. And please feel free to go through our final report for more deep insights into each part. We wish best luck for Radico at their international business expansion journey. Thank you so much. Again, I'm just so amazed by you young people. Okay, so tell me who you are and what country you come from. Yep, I, I'm Vedant and I come from India. I am 17 years old. 17, okay. Uh, I'm Ellen from Germany. I am 16 years old. So perfect. I'm Ahmed from Egypt and I'm 16 years old. Amazing. Two um, more. I'm, I'm Emily, I'm from Taiwan and I'm 17 years old. And ja is it Jaten? Yeah, I'm, I'm Jatin and I'm 17 and I'm from Singapore. Singapore, wow. I, like the young people that that gravitate to us really are exceptional like you guys are all going to be i don't know ceos of companies someday first of all presentation very good very good i think that there was one person in your team that was a little nervous that rushed it um and and you probably know who you are but for the most part exceptional presentation skills you guys must have rehearsed did you rehearse a lot? This is yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, what I, I really admired about your presentation, I mean, it's really unique and specific, right? It needed to be organic. It needed to be a halal uh, invested market. And then for you guys to really be able to identify the country of Indonesia is the right place, which you're right. It is the right place. Um, that's very, that's exceptional. So congratulations on that. Um, I guess my question to you is the, the uh, one uh, poster that you had, which was an Asian specific woman. Um, so from what I understand, a lot of the cultures, um, especially with hair, right, is they do cover up their hair. So um, in, in, in some respect, it's almost like it, it it devalues the, um, the importance of having hair color, right? So how would you like address that for a lot of the 
traditional Muslim women who do have to cover up their hair. Did you think about that, guys? Well, um, we did think about that. And we also thought that um, for a woman, it's not only a thing about um, being like in the in public to show off your hair, but it's also a thing like to feel for yourself. I think many women can um, actually agree with that, that they want to feel for themselves eventually younger, but also there are a lot of uh, women who do not cover up their hair. Right. So both, especially the younger um, co potential customers mm -hmm. are rather like, it's for them, coloring their hair is rather a thing of uh, trend setting and um, a modest thing to do. And that's why we also target them as, a, as one of the groups, for example, on Instagram to not only color your hair, for example, root covering, but also to make yourself unique, to show yourself how you imagine yourself and not just stay yeah. in your because I saw blonde, right? Blonde hair in Indonesia would be very unique and special indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I um, actually can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do we have that. anybody? Do we have Raphael? Do we have anybody from Radico uh, present? I don't think so, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. And do you have any questions, panelists? Okay, so Professor Kolovic, I think I'm going to have to depend on you now to be my teammate here, to be our, our uh, co-faculty here to, to give our, our students assessments. Yes, thank you very much for this uh, very, very good presentation. I have a very quick question. So for your marketing, uh, you did not uh, propose any traditional media, yet you are targeting all kinds of uh, all, all women. So do you think you can reach all women in Indonesia with these uh, online um, channels? Um, and, and if if not, what have you prepared to reach these women? Yep, so to answer that, uh, one of our key considerations when we uh, looked at marketing was cost. And Radico clearly mentioned in their challenge that they needed a cost uh, uh, low cost solution for marketing. So we based our responses on that. Secondly, uh, our main uh, focus is on youth. So youth is mainly identified over social media that we presented and the maximum reach uh, is possible via YouTube, Instagram and the other uh, channels that we suggested. Um, so those are the major two reasons uh, why we choose social media. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so um, thank you for your presentation. Congratulations and uh, thank you for joining Academy this year. Um, I hope that you guys continue on with X Culture. Uh, I hope you had a great experience. Um, there's no saying that you can't do Academy twice. So, and then hopefully when you move on to university, you'll join us at the university level. And remember that, you know, you're also, um, uh, it's also possible for you to join the coaching program. So welcome to the X culture family. Should you stay, should you choose to stay with us? Okay. So we are now uh, moving forward to Zen CV Serbia. Yes, wait a minute. Before we go, I will launch the poll. Uh, yeah, also, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, no poll. Yeah. And also I want to say that you guys are, everyone is very well dressed. It looks so professional. You are, you are. <laughs> the gentlemen, the men just, you know, like girls always do a great job dressing themselves. But when you see a gentleman dress themselves, you can see that it's, it's very special, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So 23 seconds to, to do your survey, please. Dr. B, I feel like us coaches like are underdressed, I think. <laughs> yeah, me too. I have a sleeveless, like it's collared, but I have a sleeveless dress on. But remember, I'm in Miami. So this is actually professional in Miami. <laughs> okay, just 15 seconds and I will end the poll, okay?
Uh, for the other team, every everyone is here already. Did I miss any 7, member? Yeah, if you are 712 and you're not currently uh, promoted to a panelist, please raise your hand immediately. Okay. And go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, do your presentation. It's team 712. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, Team 712, if you could please um, go ahead and share your presentation. Sure, sorry, just a second. Okay. Okay, Chris Charis is saying that her screen is glitching, so. We will patiently wait. I think we're we're uh, we're well uh, positioned with time. Let me just look, because Raphael has me on this. Oh, Raphael, we're um, just a few minutes. We're just a few minutes late, Raphael. Okay, that's that's fine. <laughs> Actually, I thought we we would be more late. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, we're just a few minutes late. We have a lot of uh, events, ex-culture events going on today. So we really have to try to stay on schedule. There we go. Thank you, Charis. So whenever you feel ready, you can start, okay? Good luck. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our research and project proposal for SENCB. We've put together the most crucial elements of our report into a presentation. So again, thank you for the opportunity that you've given us and we hope our research proves to be valuable. So after conducting our initial research, our team consolidated the following list of competitors by analyzing elements from many different angles and perspectives. We culminated this information and compared ZenCV's prices and products with these competitors. After investigating further, we came up with a set of strengths and weaknesses for the overall competition, and we rated these individual companies by creating categories and appraising them on a scale of 1 to 10. It's evident that ZenCV excels at design and price value, yet requires improvement in user convenience and options. What we've understood from this is that we need product development and proposals which will help ZenCV become more user-friendly and connect with their target audiences of young adults and older. These points in our online platforms will lay the foundation for the ideas that we've collected for you today. So as Tanya said before, uh, we assessed that ZenCV's greatest weakness was um, its user convenience in compared to its company um, competitors, while its greatest strength was its price. So we came up with two um, business ideas that could be offered. First of all, Zen CV can offer more packages that are tailored to specific sectors because potential customers may be more inclined to purchase a package that's more tailored to themselves as they um, have a feeling of exclusivity. We also propose that Zen CV should offer short courses at a discounted price to increase customer reach. This utilizes the lost leader strategy as it attracts attention to other products which have higher profit margins. For example, Zen CV can offer short tutorials through interactive videos or blogs. This allows the customer to gain insight into Zen CV service before committing to purchasing the product. This helps build trust and increases the chances of them paying for a package. Finally, we also, um, by making the courses interactive and um, having the blogs interactive, it's called interactive marketing, which engages with the audience and thus making them take into action. Next slide, please. And these are some of the social media posts that we had put together. And we think that this creativity would help build X culture a deeper level of understanding for their audience. Okay, so we conducted um, a survey amongst people around um, in our school um, for the website feedback. So our team has con um, conducted a survey on the website experience. Most respondents com commented positively regarding the color scheme and graphics. 
However, several respondents still wish the color scheme was more vibrant and that the website navigation was more straightforward. We suggested that the FAQ page, customer reviews, and credentials should be have a separate page than the home page. Those who explored the website on mobile phone devices felt like the user interface was not user friendly. Additionally, many respondents' main concern was reliability. Thus, if possible, Zen CV should also include some statistics on their customers' successes. Our team also discovered that the FAQ had one question repeated and as seen as on the screen grab. Through um, two respondents suggested that Zen CV remove images of Buddha from their website as they may be offensive to potential customers. Lastly, one respondent commented that the labeling of 35 years old and over as seniors may be inappropriate. Next, we will be discussing the possible partnerships that Gen CV can explore with content creators. So the first candidate is Mark Tilbury with a YouTube channel and TikTok account. The second candidate is Aaron McLough with a TikTok account. And the third candidate is Shada Zarai with an Instagram and TikTok account. So these are all very famous social media and they all have a good amount of subscribers and followers and good engagement rate. However, the most important thing is that the target audience is people looking for career advice or tips for self-improvement, which is in line with Zen CV's target audience and who Zen CV needs to engage with. Next slide, please. So the objectives of the partnerships with these content creators is to number one, promote Zen CV. Number two, the growth of brand awareness. Number three, increase website traffic and engagement. And number four, increase sales of Zen CV's products. Next slide, please. So here's the proposal or the details of the plan that Zen CV can explore. So first is to create a video. Uh, the content creators will create a video on the company and what they do, their unique selling propositions, mission, vision. And the video should start with proposing a scenario in which the viewers are having trouble writing a good CV and how Zen CV can help this problem and help the watchers. So Zen CV can also provide a discount code which will persuade and create interest in Zen CV's products and services. And in return, Zen CV can offer monetary payment for the cooperation of the content creators. The YouTube channel of a company is essential in the connection with the clients. They need to give relevant information to them in a format that is easy to understand. Some of the CV channels publish lots of videos that are not important and do not have the quality needed. These videos make that the relevant information of the company are lost in many other videos that almost no one cares about. It is better if a company has a little number of videos, but that the ones that are published have the quality and important information so that these ones are attractive to the clients. The video needs to have a format that is striking and entertaining for the viewer. If they do this, the client will get engaged in the video and will understand all the information without getting bored. To create a relevant video, these videos need to be made thinking on the following questions. What are the most common questions of my clients? What do my clients want to know? And which information will be helpful for my clients to interact with my platform in a better way? If the company asks themselves these questions, they will make a video with a necessary topic and the channel will be successful. So uh, this is an activation calendar for Zen CV. So on post one for Instagram, we choose Instagram and Facebook because this is the most used platforms for millennials who are trying to apply for jobs. So on post one on Instagram and Facebook, we talk about real life stories of people who have benefited from using Zen CV. Uh, we talk about one or two stories max and what aspects of Zen CV have helped them with their CV. Post two of Instagram and Facebook, we talk about their competition what sets Zen CV apart from the rest. And on post three, we talk about some free advice that they can give to users. We talk about how their CV should look according to their job that they're applying for. The reason for posting every day is to keep target audience interested in what Zen CV is trying to do. It shows that Zen CV has a lot of content to offer and is very active in the community. When posts with specific stories can relate to the audience's real life problems, it brings in a sense of caring for the target audience. Posting on social media every day helps build brand authority. 
when consumers see Zen TV posting every day on social media, it is especially replying to their questions and posting original content, it helps build a positive image in their heads. Another main reason for posting on social media is also because it improves brand awareness. Yeah, and with that, uh, ne next slide. And with that, we conclude report sections one, two, and three of the Zen CV presentation. With the end of this, we believe that you have a good idea of what Zen CV is, what it has to offer, who are the competitors, what is a product and the business idea, the partnerships, the website feedback, and the activation calendar. We hope you found this presentation interesting and informative. Thank you. Thank you very much. If for any comments, I will just send you guys the poll so you can vote while we do some comments, okay? Is there anybody here for, for uh, Zen CV? It looks like not, unfortunately. Okay. Ah, Dr. Taras, you have joined us. Well. While they announced and all those students, I sneaked out. Yeah, so um, first let me ask how old you guys are and what countries you come from. Tony, I'm 16 and we're, I'm from India. India. Yeah. Hi, I'm Molly and I'm 15 and I'm from Singapore alongside my friend Karis, whose mic isn't working, and she's also 15 and from Singapore. Okay. Hello, I'm Justin. I'm 17 and I'm from the Philippines. Okay. I've heard about you, Justin. <laughs> uh, I'm Karthik. I'm 17 and I'm from India. Okay. Hi, I'm Juan Esteban. I'm 16 and I'm from Colombia. Colombia, perfect. Congratulations again. I don't know. I think, I think that the, you guys are getting better and better younger. So, I, which is kind of scary for me <laughs> as a professor because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep up with you guys. But um, you know what? I'm gonna ask Dr. Tara since we have him. Uh, we have the privilege of having our founding president on screen. So I'm going to ask him to comment on this one. Well, I have one question. How did you make those images move in your presentation? Are those GIF files or like, how did you like, that was cool. Um, and sorry, actually, I'm asking about a technical thing, not a substantive thing. So yeah, um, actually we got um, a, like a template from Google. So they already had these pre-ready GIFs that we could use. And we found them really, um, um, they were really good for our use of presentation. Yeah. Yeah, I need to learn how to use those templates for my presentations. <laughs> but yes, great job. I mean, when I was your age, I mean, I couldn't even get close to you. So I was just impressive. Scary, right? <laughs> so we do have two faculty members here, uh, of course, uh, Professor Kolovic, and then we have been joined by Professor Louis. Lu I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name, but uh, Professor Minita Louis. And also you. Professor Greg K uh, Kivenzor is in the audience. I raised hand if somebody can maybe move him into the audience. Yeah. The audience. Yeah. So comments from you professors? Well, it was really a very, very good presentation. I have a quick question. Um, what is the point of differentiation between Zen CV and the competitors? You did not explain about the Ikigai concept that they build on. So do you think that is enough for them to differentiate themselves from the others? So what we were actually focusing on was the fact that we needed to market uh, our differences and in the including Ikigai and um, the many different products that we do offer. So uh, again, what our focus was on in the report was mainly user reach and making sure that our users understood the differences between um, other CV platforms and ours. So since uh, Ikigai is also becoming a very well-known widespread thing. So our social media posts would also center around Ikigai being the central factor in the company itself. So that way we were hoping to embody that um, concept. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor uh, Kivens, do you have a, a comment for us? Okay, and Professor Lee is, uh, she's 
she's having technical difficulties. So, so we're at halfway. And uh, I thought that this is a great opportunity for us to take our ex culture picture. So this is kind of like our, uh, you know, our, our, our traditional customary thing where we do this. And now I want to start this thing where, you know, ex culture, this means friendship. So Raphael, you ready to take our pictures? So if you could all please bring your, um, your photos in so that we can get you uh, in our social media, that would be amazing. Actually, so, Tejas or Jaren, can you please help me with that? <laughs> yeah, Tejas and Jaren, pictures, pictures. I can't, we got it, we got it. Yeah, I got to stop putting everything on Raphael. He's going to have a nervous breakdown on me. <laughs> yeah, I got it, Tejas, no worries. So let's do, let's do our X. Yes. Ready? One, two. Oh, I'm, I'm going to wait first for whoever else. Your X, Karthik, we can't see your X. Justin, we need your X. Uh, uh, Seven thirteen. Everybody. If you want to as well, you can come on. No worries. Yeah, every, you know everybody, come on and and come show. on. Ahmed, let's see it. Jaden, let's see it. Manita, if you're and Isabella, if you guys can join us, please. Okay, okay. ready. One, two, three. Okay. Again, do it again, Jaren, in case it's screwed up. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Okay, should have saved. I'm, 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 a, I'm a double check. <laughs> I'm a double check just in case. Yeah. But it should have saved. Yeah, okay. And uh, so I guess we'll continue on. So now we have uh, our next speakers are 713. And uh, it is. The let's client see. is the Exculture Academy. Oh, I'm the client. <laughs> you are the client. <laughs> client. We are the client, guys. Okay, so my team better have a lot of questions because if this is the winner, we're going to be executing some of these, uh, some of these strategies. So, um, so, uh, and Very then, curious to yeah, hear. Raphael, if you can uh, demote some of our people from the panelists. And then uh, uh, my senior coaches, y'all got to be on 1000%. I need you to absorb as much of this information as possible. Annette, you ready? You're taking your notes, Annette? <laughs> 7 13, make sure, you know, there will be a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, Pressure on. <laughs> it's okay. just four of you, or we are missing anyone else? No, it's just the four of us. Okay. So whenever you. Uh -huh. You can, Hi. you can start. Good luck. We are Team 713, and the company we have chosen is X Culture Academy. I am the Amedisani from India, and sadly, we couldn't have all of us with here, us here today. So um, we have Sarah from Singapore, Drew from Singapore, and Elise from Nigeria. Hi, I'm Francis, and I'm from the Philippines. I'm Isabella, and I'm from Venezuela. And Abu Ahmad from Egypt. Okay, so moving on, we are now in the section one part of our report. So this might be general knowledge, but what is X culture? As X culture academy is an extension to the knowledge of the culture, for students, which allows internationally minded students aged 14 to 17 to collaborate virtually to solve real life world business problems. As time changes, so do the need for new skills. So here we have our five indirect competitors, Junior Achievement, Wharton Global Youth Program, Model United Nations, Betable, and BizWorld. These were deemed as indirect competitors by the members of the team since they had similarities with the program but still had a fair share of differences. Each of these competitors are unique in their own way, but the team has come upon the conclusion that X culture is still far ahead in terms of its educational system. So here is our SWOT analysis. First off, the strengths. The strengths are its uses an online setting, great social media influence, it is diverse, wide range of connections, it has the academy has the funds to offer stipends to the students who need them, can provide a certificate, review, and report of the student's performance that can affect even the outcome of a job interview. A well-taught educational system, and last but not least, international experience. So what are the weaknesses of the program? 
it needs the presence of the internet, which is quite unstable right now. It has insufficient recognition. It is still a fresh program, lacks funds to provide more resources, risk of online harassment, lacks opportunities for the disabled. Next, the opportunities of the program. People becoming globally competent. It is unique compared to other programs. Demand for experience. There is an increasing demand for online classes. More countries in need of this program, the pandemic, a need for international experience. What are the threats? The economy going down due to the pandemic. Lacking of funds can be imitated, data breaches, laws and regulations of different countries. Moving on to the new market selection. So for the new market selection, the team has picked three countries based on the following criteria. Statistics of English speakers, literacy rate, quality of education, and current economic status. The statistics of English speakers is defined as the number of people based on a specific country that has the ability and the capacity to use the English universal language that is needed to participate in the program. However, the team needed to take into account that the percentages of English speaking populations in LEDCs. Accordingly, the team has analyzed that the highest English speaking populations were one, Sri Lanka with 46.58%, two, Thailand with 47.21%, and the third, China with 50.94%. I'm going to present to you our marketing section. Starting off with the promotional channels, the team has chosen to stick with social media. According to Statista, the average use of the internet for the internet in 20 was 143 to 145 minutes. The projection for 2021, it's 155 minutes per day for an average person. As Francis said before, the countries the team has chosen to expand to are Sri Lanka, China, and Thailand. Now, the primary target for the company would be parents and school authorities, since these are the people who will be making the final decision if a student is interested in enrolling into the program. Moving on to the use of social media in the chosen countries, as we can see on the graph. In Sri Lanka, Facebook is the most used social media platform, having almost four times the number of users than the rest of the social media platforms in the country, which is why this would be the best platform to advertise in Sri Lanka. For China, on the other hand, it's a little bit more complicated since Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter are banned in the country. So X culture would have to use local social media platforms to advertise, such as Tencent, WeChat, and Weibo. And even if it's an additional effort, it is worth it considering China is the world's biggest social media market. Lastly, for Thailand, the equivalent of social media users in January 2021 was 78.7% .7 of the population, which represents 55 million users. According to StatCounter, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, and Instagram are the most used social media platforms in the country. The promotional materials the team recommends to use are posters, brochures, and short videos, since these kinds of materials are really easy to share through the platforms previously mentioned. As the team provides a few examples, we think these materials should contain the key aspects of X culture. For example, what makes it unique and why would it be beneficial for students to join the program? So for management, we first had to search the market entry modes. Selecting the market entry modes, we first had to search the country's culture. Second, the advantages and disadvantages of different entry modes. So the entry modes we selected for China with the foreign direct investment due to the country huge population that that's continuously increasing. And for Sri Lanka, we selected Dreamfield Investment as it's a long-term stable entry mode. For Thailand, we selected partnering with local as it was suggested by all the local and international business operating in Thailand and also because of the enclosed culture of Thailand. For pricing, we found out that we could increase $3 for individuals and from $4 to $9 for groups and uh, schools. That, was, that won't be uh, as much increase for those countries as those countries value educational experience um, and X culture is one of the best experiences. And the payment method we defined for China was Union Pay as it's the common method between China and the USA used over 90% of ATMs in the USA. For Sri Lanka, we selected Western Union, a wire transfer as it's a reliable transfer method that would uh, decrease the delay in payment. For Thailand, we selected bank transfer as around 78% of the population have bank accounts but Exculture would need to have a bank account in one of the local banks. 
So here is our conclusion. After reviewing everything that has been said, the team has concluded that by expanding into one of the proposed countries and by putting suggestions presented into practice, X Culture Academy will be able to gain a greater population, grow, expand, and achieve international recognition successfully. Thank you for giving us this opportunity and good morning. Can I ask a question right away? Yes. So how does it work with advertising in China? So I know they use their own platforms. Do they allow foreigners to just place ads like we do on Facebook or did you guys do the research? I'm, I'm very curious because we don't really have any participants from China, but the reason is because we advertise on Instagram, Facebook and they don't get it. So is it is it easy, like for example, from the United States, is it easy to place ads on all those Baidu and QQ and whatever else they use? Tencent, Weibo and WeChat. Well, Reach out, right, right, yeah. Yeah, some platforms that we research were Tencent, WeChat, and Weibo. And yes, it would require an additional effort, but we consider it is worth it considering China world's biggest social media market. Yeah. yeah we need to yeah, do research on how it works. I mean, as long as they allow international ads, why not? I mean, we should try yeah. it. Yeah. But have you guys seen uh, non-Chinese corporations advert uh, advertisement on those platforms? Isabella, um, Francis? Excuse me, um, let me Sheila, answer like, that I cannot question. imagine that they would not want to accept our money. Mm -hmm. My, another question, obviously, is students from China also will not be able to use um, the usual communication tools, like whatever right. we use, uh, WhatsApp or Facebook, and so I wonder how easy it, is, it will be for them then to participate, you know, be a member of a team. But again, well, I mean, this is a very promising market and I like this idea here. Yeah, I think Voss, what we could do, I, you know, these are, remember that, you know, China's the number two economically in the world. We're going to have to figure out how to, to work with them and our kids are gonna have to figure out the workarounds, right? So, you know, historically, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Google Docs, WhatsApp, and Facebook have been the preferred mediums for uh, doing this global project. But if we have Chinese uh, students included, we're going to have to figure out a new workaround. And, you know, it's, it's, it's up to our students to really figure out what best way to, to access, um, you know, their, their colleagues. Um, I have a question though. So I see that Sri Lanka is Facebook and Thailand is Facebook, but is Facebook looked at in Sri Lanka and, and Thailand as like the old people's um, social media as it's looked at in the United States? Or is it kind of like, you know, back in the beginning when for Facebook started to first uh, emerges the preferred social media platform where young people really use that? Um, yeah, um, let me answer that question. I believe um, in our research, we have found out that in Thailand, that is the case. Um, like Facebook is perceived as something that older people use, but mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka, it is something that is much more widely used for all ages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question, uh, uh, unless I interrupted you, Leilani. Yeah, well, we're just, because this is, a, this is a, a key piece that we need to figure out, and we're going to be executing a lot of this in the summertime. What we're having a challenge with is how do we reach the decision makers in specific countries? So, you know, I'm just wondering if we need to maybe um, do multiple uh, social media marketing campaigns specific to countries. Like, Voss, I've never thought of this before, that maybe we need to divest. No, no, or... we do, yeah, we do differentiate among the countries very carefully. Uh, the problem is that, yes, uh, Facebook, for example, and Instagram allow us to reach just about every country, including Sri Lanka and Thailand, but not China. And then there are a few other, like Iran, uh, North Korea, obviously. So I'm not too worried about reaching uh, Sri Lanka and Thailand, yeah. and we should take a closer look at them. Indeed, you know, most people there, or at least many people there speak English, 
somehow we haven't been paying much attention to those countries. These are very interesting markets. Yeah, yeah. So, but I'm intrigued by China, which we, we should try. I will not, be, like, yeah. you know, we, we get probably 70% of all applications we get come from India and from uh, Pakistan, right? Yeah. And China yeah. is different, but in many respects, similar in value and education a lot. Like Indian right. parents want the best, best education for their kids, right. you know, like religiously, so are Chinese. And so we should try. I guess we should we should try this summer and yeah. see what happens. Definitely. Um, We're going to need to read the paper. Annette, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had one question. But uh, before I ask that question, I maybe can um, respond to what Dr. Vass said. I can see one participant here in the comment section saying she is a participant from China. So maybe if we can reach out to her, we can see how now to get to, the, to more people from China. Yeah, that is number one. Get uh, so her who, contact. Yeah, yes. get her contact. I am going to get her contact. And um, so the question I had is for, I think it's Ahmed Dan who, pro, who presented about pricing. We are currently charging the least we can charge. Uh, team 713, that is $250 per person and uh, $750 per cohort. So you, I can see you have suggested lowering this charge, this cost, because right now we are charging the bare minimum for us to stay afloat. So how do you suggest that uh, $75 per person and $250 per cohort will keep us running? Will it now, will it now not like, um, draw us back or will it not sink us? What is, uh, what is your uh, projection or strategy when you are coming up with those prices. Sorry, just to conclude. So your, your question is about like, I'm suggesting to lower the cost, the, the fees. I, can, I saw in your, um, in your presentation, you suggested that uh, you should, uh, it, we should charge 75 per person, uh, $75 per person and uh, $250 per cohort. So I don't know what uh, what strategy you had, or maybe had to, you had actually, talked about it, and I don't know. I actually suggested to increase the current cost from seventy five to uh, seventy eight, and for the groups from twenty uh, for two hundred fifty to two hundred fifty nine. It's a slight increase, but like with the they actually suggested an increase. Yeah, 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 not an increase. Yeah, yeah. But I think you have uh, you have discounted numbers because those yeah. are are discounted are numbers. numbers for, yeah subsidized students. So those 75 would be a subsidized student's fee. And we're very we're very limited as to how many of those subsidies we get out because we really do have a sustainability issue. So if we maintain the way that we run the company right now, it won't be um, it won't be successfully independent in the future. Because right now we are running at like at cost and we're giving away a lot of seats. So we we're now in the process of like, you know, converting that where we're actually charging more full tuition as opposed to, you know, we were giving more subsidies than we were receiving full tuition. So, but yeah, I think that you just, uh, you, you took our, our discounted price and used it as our normal pricing. So that probably needs to be revisited. Gregory, I completely- yeah, Gregory had a question. Answer. Sorry about that, Gregory. Yeah. I didn't mean to do that. It's just that we're really passionate about this topic. <laughs> no problem. Uh, and and uh, this is a topic to be passionate about. Uh, after all, uh, if we are not passionate about uh, such a topic, we would never have uh, stu uh, students at the undergraduate and graduate program uh, who will be able and uh, interested in uh, participating in X culture projects. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of... Uh, uh, growing the, the future of uh, X culture. And uh, I believe that uh, people who are yet to be uh, of the college age will be the best proponents uh, uh, spreading the word of mouth uh, to their respective communities about the experience. That is why it is an important part. Uh, I, I have one, <clears throat> uh, I would say, uh, question about the contradiction in my mind. Uh, the Chinese economy is the largest out of three, by far the largest. Uh, then Thai economy and then Sri Lankan economy. And uh, so economically, Chinese students in uh, 
well, I would say a large portion of Chinese students who um, get to this uh, uh, age are supported by their families because as we know, due to the uh, one child uh, policy uh, for each youngster, uh, there are two parents and four grandparents. That is why uh, youngsters are uh, the, the hope of the family and they are uh, relatively well su uh, supported by uh, their families. Uh, in Thailand, the situation is patchy. There are very poor areas and uh, quite rich areas. Sometimes they coincide like in Bangkok. And uh, then Sri Lanka is the most, uh, the, the poorest out of these three countries in terms of the GDP per capita. Uh, however, to the best of my knowledge, and uh, I, uh, uh, my uh, research of emerging markets is my academic preference, I believe that uh, the population in Sri Lanka is the most open one, followed by the Thai and uh, Chinese, not because uh, of the lack of interest in the outside world, but because of the regulations. Uh, government regulations uh, that we already uh, uh, took into account in China are the strictest. Yeah. In Thailand, uh, they have a very strict area, not criticizing the monarch, for example, <clears throat> uh, or some other areas that are not necessarily of interest to uh, the ex culture pro uh, uh, projects. And in Sri Lanka is the most open in terms of the re regulations area. That is why it is important to uh, differentiate the strategy when contacting uh, these countries because uh, it is uh, a common knowledge that Google is explicitly prohibited in China. Right. And in my projects, most of uh, my students prefer to use Google Docs. So this option is taken off the table. Yeah. There are many other options. Yeah. So, so I understand we have a lot of things that um, I think over the summer, Dr. Voss and I will be sitting down and restructuring that. I really, I mean, I, I've never thought about the workaround of how to get mm -hmm. China. And I think Dr. Voss and I are, we're going, so Minita, if you're interested, in, okay, so Minita, we will reach out to you. Um, but I think that this summer, we're really going to take this, thank you, you guys, into great consideration in opening up the market for China. Yeah, I really think that that's the way we need to go. But uh, not to cut you off, Gregory, we have three more presentations, and we have also the coaches' graduation at 11 o'clock that we have to try to get to. And I see that Tim Muth has joined us. Tim, no comments required from you today, but we are moving on to the next presentation. You guys did an amazing job. Thank you for opening our eyes to uh, some of our future potential. So Annette, we got a lot to work on this summer. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, next team, please uh, come on uh, and, and share your presentation and uh, we'll continue on. It's Brenda, right? Yeah, yeah, it's me. Okay, just a moment. Brenda, are you solo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is also another uh, teammate, but uh, he will uh, be open to the questions at the end of this presentation. Okay. So I will start. Um, we are team uh, 59 and the company we choose is Capsules. Uh, this is the agenda. Initially, we have a short introduction of cap source. Then we have main competitor, the sweat analysis, and so on. This is our team. I'm Brenda Voltran, and also uh, there is a uh, lay counter, and uh, we'll be presenting our project. Um, we begin with an introduction of the company. Capsource is an American company based in the United States, whose goal is to expand its market using a virtual internship program uh, that allows students to gain uh, professional experience in different areas such as marketing, research and development, and uh, allows students to acquire skills in leadership, organization, um, time management, etc. 
Uh, then uh, there are the main uh, competitors. So these are Apteji, uh, Repent, Fresh Grade, and Scudat. Uh, this is the SWOT analysis. Uh, so we have, uh, for example, the strains. Um, also, we have the treats. So these uh, treats will be the main um, positive points for uh, competitors. Uh, here uh, we have the market analysis. So we choose uh, Canada as our target market. So we believe that CapSource should expand its market uh, gradually. Uh, it started with countries that are similar culturally, in this case, Canada, uh, because both countries are uh, very similar. They speak the same languages. They recognize the same standard of manners and politeness. Uh, so entering the market will be much easier than in other countries. So we believe this will be a good start. In the graph, uh, we can see that both countries are, share similar uh, cultural characteristics. For example, power distance uh, differs only by one point. Um, also, uh, there is an uncertainty and avoidance. Uh, they differ by two points and they share the same uh, value and indulgence. Uh, these, are, these are the main characteristics of the market. Uh, so we have uh, the customers. So we have uh, educational institutions, uh, students, and uh, the requirements uh, should be um, a similar culture to those of the USA, uh, also uh, a good proficiency in English and access um, to uh, internet, open to innovation, and uh, schools and students engage. Uh, okay, sorry, I have to, um, okay, I have to. That's okay, that's okay, you can share again. Okay, this is, okay, uh, so this is the uh, main characteristic of the market, okay. Uh, Okay, so here we have the industries attracted to the virtual internship program. So uh, we have medical and health, customer service, administrative work, sales representatives. So all these uh, industries are able to work virtually. Uh, this is the deep analysis of the market. So we have cultural factors, for example, education, characteristics of the organization. Uh, so it's important to know what are the expectations of the, of the company, um, so of the partnerships, of the educational institutions, and also the language. So um, this is important because, uh, for example, if CapSource should consider enter the Chinese market, so uh, English would be not enough. So um, this will be also important. We should consider also political factors. So political interests should, should be considered economic factors. For example, tastes and preferences of the customers. Uh, these are the promotion channels. So we have um, college career centers, Instagram, LinkedIn, and internship.com. Uh, Uh, this uh, is a um, purpose uh, of uh, advertising a bus stop shelter. So uh, we think that bus advertising captures the attention of people uh, who usually take the bus and have to wait for a long time. So if um, we want an advertising that uh, from cap source that remains in the people's mind, um, we should do, uh, so we propose these three um, this three advertisement. Uh, so we think a good idea will be place um, these ads near to educational institutions, for example, uh, in Ontario, where the University of Toronto is located. Uh, this is the main message. Uh, we believe that the main message should communicate innovation, uh, creativity, dedication, and um, also respect for customer needs. We propose um, 
uh, two slogans, the opening the door to tomorrow and an innovative way to learn. Uh, these are the promotional materials. Um, so in terms of promotional materials, uh, we can use uh, brochures with, inform uh, with information. So uh, for example, uh, the contact of gap source and also in which consists the um, virtual internship program. Uh, we propose also the distribution of pens, uh, caps, backpacks, um, etc. Uh, this is the pricing. So we propose a package for students, a package for universities, and a package for companies. Also a subscription that should be annual or monthly. Uh, this uh, will be the entry mode. So we propose a collaboration. So uh, already um, they collaborate with partnerships, but uh, we propose another partnerships that will be focused on uh, e-commerce. So as internet has revolutionized in recent years, e-commerce has also grown significantly over time. For example, we can see that companies like Amazon or uh, with a value of 52% or Alibaba with a value of 25% uh, dominate the market due to internet. Uh, we believe also that CapSource should consider focus, um, as I already said, um, on e-commerce partnerships, given their popularity in recent years and their value in terms of money, which has, uh, has made e-commerce the new promising market. Uh, this figure shows how um, uh, people around the world is more attracted to websites uh, of Amazon or eBay instead of Ikea. So uh, we can see the difference. Uh, here we have um, another um, graph. Uh, this is the retail e-commerce revenue in Canada. So uh, we can see how e-commerce revenue has grown over time since 2017 and how it uh, will be in the next two years until 2022. So this justifies why it uh, will be a good possibility for CapSource to gain um, visibility and cost customers and grants in the Canadian market. Uh, so this is, uh, so here we have the partnership, so the current partnership and the proposed uh, partnership. Uh, this uh, will be the communication uh, with partners. So we propose by phone or by email, draw an invitation to webinars. And uh, about uh, certification and regulations as cap source offered services, not extra certifications are needed. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay. So if you could unshare your presentation, good job. Um, so are you a Professor Ernesto Tavoletti student? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you see us in Macerata two years ago in 2019 when we were there? No, no, I am um, a new student. So oh, okay. yeah, but uh, unfortunately he couldn't. Uh, come today yeah, he's one of our um he's one of our very important uh colleagues he's always um uh he's actually on the board of directors so congratulations um you know your your presentation was very detailed very very detailed um and i really liked how you chose to do the the boards and the signage around universities i have one question for you though um, so your market is Canada, correct? Yeah. So is Canada um, similar to the United States where um, in the United States, there's a, a stigma of really riding public transportation systems. So did you take that into consideration? Is, is there a stigma about riding public transportation in Canada? Um, so that's an excellent question. It's not something we considered during the presentation, during the project, but I would imagine that more research into that area would 
probably guide our recommendations for where to place those uh, billboards, those um, advertisements. And I think that probably it would be beneficial even if people are not riding the bus just having that, what we have in the United States at least, is it's very easy to see these things out in the world. And so you don't have to necessarily be riding public transportation to see the advertisements. And I think definitely, you know, when you're driving by in a car or something, you might see the advertisement and it'll stick in your mind. Um, so that's really what we were looking at, as opposed to necessarily the people riding the bus, it's the people all around who are seeing the advertisements. Okay. Uh, does anybody, faculty, anybody else have a comment? Short comments, because we're running out of time. We have to go to the uh, coach's graduation ceremony in 20 minutes, and we have two more presentations. So any comments? All right, we'll make this quick. I'm Jordan Levy from CapSource, guys. Well ah! done. Lee and uh, Brenda, I'm, I'm very impressed with your presentation. Um, I guess, so I did want to ask one question. Um, so basically you suggested charging subscriptions and for packages to all three of our stakeholders. Is there a, a pronounced or highlighted value that you think each one of those members gets more so than anything else that you believe that they should be willing to pay for after doing your research on our company? So if I understand you correctly, you're asking specifically for numbers, is that correct? Or not the price, but the value. So like, so we don't charge students currently, but in, in the, the suggested revenue streams, you said packages for, you know, the schools, students and companies. So I'm just wondering, and, and, you know, for the record, I actually really did like the idea of advertising on, you know, school public transport. We all use it, you know, to get around campus and that's you know, triggering in student minds, like, hey, there's opportunities for you, you know, to, to escalate your career. I think it's a really cool place. But I was talking more about the, the suggestion on the revenue model um, to charge all three stakeholders. Like, is there a specific value prop that you think shine, outshines the rest for each of those categories that, you know, maybe you can highlight for us? Sure. Um, so my background is industrial and organizational psychology, so I'm not really from the business perspective. Um, so this was kind of like a, a learning curve for me. Uh, but I think that um, having each stakeholder be able to contribute to your, you know, your overarching success is something that would be particularly valuable. I understand that it may be hard to charge students at the moment. And you can, I believe X Culture, the previous, um, the previous presentation that we just had said that they offer a sort of subsidized, you know, like fees for students who possibly cannot afford the full package. I think that could have some value if you don't feel comfortable charging students an exorbitant amount you could still charge them something mm -hmm. something small just to make sure that your profit margin is is good because i think there's a sweet spot if you undercharge then you won't be able to compete mm -hmm. in the market but if you overcharge people won't be attracted to your product uh, and so really if you could um find a way to really analyze how important each stakeholder is and how much they can contribute, it would definitely go far, I believe. I'm not sure if I understood your question correctly. Does that answer it? It's yeah. slightly, yeah. I think it's a, it's a, it's a really good, you know, st uh, starting place. I think yeah. one thing about multi-sided marketplaces is it's very hard to charge all the stakeholders because, yeah. you know, supply and demand. So think about, you know, a very simple example, Uber, you know, they charge the riders and then they pay the drivers. So, you know, in our case scenario, the, the, the driver is actually the, the students, right? They're the ones who are, are providing, you know, value to our, you know, community, which is typically institutions by paying, you know, for, for their, uh, for their degrees and then companies by doing work as part of internships. So, you know, for the time being, our, our revenue model is to support students and give, you know, the opportunities to them by virtue of charging the schools and companies. So I was just wondering if there was any specific value proposition that you thought was like, oh, students would be willing to pay for X, 
And it sounds to me like just participating might be enough value. You know, one thing that we've thought a little bit about is like certificates of completion um, and the ability to get you know feedback on their experience from their peers and from the company. Um, so I think overall, guys, great work. I think all around, extremely impressive, especially, you know, some of you guys in high school, I can't believe how professional you are. And um, right. hats off to you, you know, the, the administration that put this together. We're really grateful to be a part of your community. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And you know, would we you be willing to, is there a way I can contact you possibly to continue this conversation or is that inappropriate? No, absolutely. Feel free. I'm going to drop my email right in there. So I'm Jordan. I actually signed up as Ankush. He's here as well. It's our, my co-founder. Um, we're, uh, we're excited to continue the conversation with you guys and, and thank you so much. Feel free to email us at any point. Perfect. Yeah, Thank you so uh, much. I was going to suggest that uh, Dr. Taras and I did significant amount of research on this. And uh, what we found is that when um, students have skin in the game, the performance is better and the quality of students is better. So that's also a conversation that you can have with us. I mean, we're, we're at the end part of making some final, final decisions on that specific questions based on academy. And we've done a lot of um, testing to, to figure out how we get the right sweet spot as we um, suggested. So, but thank you for your contribution. Thank okay, you. so um, uh, moving on to the next team. So we have a team, I believe 691. Sorry, I just want to say something. Yes, Brenda. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't realize I share an ex uh, I use an external monitor. So uh, I, I think you oh, didn't uh, yeah. see the, co the complete um, screen. Yes, we did, we saw it, but you taught me something that I can do that. I'm very, very <laughs> sorry, really. No, it very was good. Sorry. Brenda, you did a great job. You did a great job. And say hello Thank to you. Professor Flora. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay, so if I can get uh, team number 60, 691 to share your presentation, please. And uh, here we go. Uh, bueno, I'm Alexandra and I'm from Romania. Uh, hello, I'm Wasi and I'm from Bangladesh. Well, um, yeah, this is Amanda from Taiwan. Hi, my name is Robert and I'm from Slovakia. Hola, my name is Angelica and I am from Mexico. Namaste, I'm Abigail from India. Okay, so today we're here to talk about all the recommended strategies that could help trace chemos to get out of this crisis of COVID-19. And we've developed marketing strategies that help to emphasize the unique features of the cafe, and also a series of recommended methods to target people from 18 to 30 years old living in Russia. So in the next following minutes, we're going to introduce to you the most important parts of our recommended strategies. And now let's directly jump into the first session, restaurants in the COVID-19 era. So it is a fact that the COVID-19 pandemic and other restrictions that came with it had a huge impact on the food sector. Here are some limitations as of January 27th of 2021 that apply in Russia. So businesses are no longer required to have at least 30% of their employees working remotely. The vaccination campaign were launched and bars and restaurants are allowed to remain open at night again. Here's the visual of the COVID-19 cases in Russia from April 2020 until March 2021. Some of our team members have contacted restaurant owners from their regions to hear out the opinions and standpoints on how restrictions affected the eatery sector. And here's what they had to say. How much did COVID-19 affect their business? Their revenue has decreased. How did they cope with the crisis? Their biggest source of income came from the delivery services and strategies that could be used in other restaurants requesting financial aid from the government. In conclusion, the overall Income of the food industry has declined significantly, and restaurants which coped better with the crisis are the ones that came up with new marketing strategies and were open to changing their prices. Uh, okay, so industry and competition list. So there are mainly four competitors. That's Nikki, it's family friendly and vegan, and Idiot, it's private and cozy. Moika 3, it participates in social events and creates special nights such as cocktail nights and Chedra. It's only atmosphere and looks like to an old, old style kitchen. And now the pricing comparison graph, and you can see that the 
the light green part is the minimum price and the dark green part is the maximum price. And now move on to the next slide. Uh, it's competitor's rating and now uh, SWOT analysis and the strength parts. Okay, the strengths are, it has low prices, great locations, has a great variation of foods and owns a confectionery. But don't get your hopes high because there are plenty of weaknesses. And the weaknesses are the prices of the ingredients have increased, lack of budget and customer relations, home deliveries and making any revenue. But still there are some opportunities. Those are increased price and give discounts, keep some customers favorite items. They can make deals with catering services and take away the place to look a bit more appealing and start a membership card. And the threats are, the, uh, the competition of home delivery, emergence of new, new food brands, a lack of marketing, and due to COVID-19, tourists can come. And the most important one is that they are not very famous in social media among the teenagers. So now we're going to move on to the products and offerings section. I will be talking about our recommendations for new products. Um, one of our main recommendations for the restaurant is to become an official vendor of a vegan meat company, such as Impossible or Beyond. Both of these companies produce meat-like substitutes that are 100% plant-based and provide an appeal that to people that are trying to transition into vegetarianism. Um, Impossible has reported on its website that some of its official vendors have seen a 36% increase in sales after their product was added to the menu. Um, additionally, this provides the restaurant with a good marketing opportunity. Consumers can locate Troitsky most on the Impossible vendor map and lastly, these um, vegan meats are pretty trendy and they provide a good social media appeal. Some of our additional recommendations are English language proficiency and personalization training for staff to reach a larger customer base and establish stronger customer relations. We also recommend hosting social events like karaoke, trivia, um, as well as mutually beneficial partnerships with neighboring grocery stores and cafes. We also suggest an outdoor dining area, fixed uh, weekly menus or meals, as well as renting out the space for um, special events and providing catering. Mm -hmm. most prices are average for the vegetarian and vegan food sector, but based on the area, they are relatively low in comparison with other restaurants. The goal is to choose the correct pricing strategy to find satisfaction in profits, but also for the customers, especially throughout these hard times and when Trotsky Most hasn't been doing any major changes to the pricing in the recent years. After discussing and researching, we decided to choose the increasing prices, prices strategy. This strategy needs to be prepared and applied appropriately, otherwise the image of a low-priced cafe could be damaged, and this could lead in potential loss of some regular customers. On the other hand, the biggest advantage is the increase of the profit, and very importantly, Troy Schemos is able to save up for a cash reserve, which will enable the restaurant to use it for further investing purposes. Every successful strategy depends on preparation and timing. Therefore, the most advised period for increasing the price tax is before summer. This must be done technically so that the change isn't as recognizable. For the pricing promotion suggestions, we have loyalty reward cards, disc discounts for tax on social media, and special event, uh, event discounts and social media competition vouchers. So for the marketing part, we will be telling you how Troisky Most can sell themselves to attract more clients. The first step to create a good marketing strategy is to segment your target clients according to likes and characteristics. This will allow to create a more effective publicity. Okay, so for promotion channels, as you can see, talking about social media, YouTube, BK, and Instagram are the most popular ones. And although Facebook is in a lower scale, it's very popular among tourists. Another good way to advertise is writing blogs. This will give the clients an inside view of the staff and let them know the proposal of value, allowing them not only to taste the restaurant dishes, but also what the restaurant means as an experience. Talking about experiences, creating fun events as karaoke nights or reunions for healthy food lovers will allow to create a community, which means almost free advertisement. On a longer term, creating strategic alliances where two companies can benefit one from another can be good. For example, with supermarkets, Trisky Most can sell them their food at the ready meal section, or with tour agencies, where tourists can be taken for a break of their tours for a meal in Trisky Most, and also get tickets for other tours there. 
since we are focusing on online marketing campaign our major elements of marketing campaign would be surrounded by the theme of social responsibility ethical consideration and liability we have two major ways of presentation of campaign that is sponsorships and influencer marketing for the benefit of sponsors the restaurant provides them business images as an ethical restaurant adhering to vegetarianism as for the benefit of client company its credibility and exposure both would be elevated now once the credi credibility established we could seek internet celebrities for further promotion next slide please now coming to the ways to convince the client to choose roski most we can perform it in three different ways either through the use of logic and reasoning establishing trust and authority or through an appeal to emotions and beliefs as for earning the trust of clients we can highlight restaurant owners experiences about the benefit and philosophies of vegetarianism for the reasoning of choosing the troski most we can use the facts about health benefits of vegetarian diets and advertise the budget friendly prices we offer now as an appeal to emotion we can display pictures of animals in advertisements as a method of eliciting the emotional response in favor of vegetarian diets we can also use the helping propaganda by using the posters and signs asking them to help us survive covid-19 moving through promotional materials few of them can be designed as suggested this one is for vk the next one is we have is for instagram consisting of filters and posts and lastly for youtube ads and flyers so to wrap up we have finally developed the recommended strategy surrounding value propositions that combines the restaurant's features of healthy delicious food fast food low price comfortable interiors and diversity next please even though we are only seven high school students but together we develop a complete set of survival strategy hope you all find this helpful this is team 691 thanks for listening again amazing <laughs> i again i'm just floored 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 by the quality of presentation by the quality of research by your professionalism uh i noticed that you guys were speeding through your presentation cuz i prompted you to which i should not have done because i think that that uh you guys were being being very kind but again exceptional job um i don't have time for any more comments please go ahead and make votes uh but is troitsky is there a representative in, for troitsky most here I can I imagine not because Russia is in it's probably the middle of the night for Russia right now. So but uh congratulations you guys um I can't believe that you guys are seniors or high schoolers. So uh you did such a great job amazing. Um so I'm going to ask now for the last team to come on. I be I believe they're also doing uh Trotsky most uh while you guys are voting for the um team 691 also trotsky trotsky most so i think for the next team is just andrea gomez okay so, yeah so andrea if you could please share your presentation yes i will go ahead can you see it yes and we will just wait just a second for the end of the polling for this uh for team 691 okay okay there we go yes andrea so good morning everyone i'm andrea and today i will present you our analysis of cross chemos on behalf of my team team 161 so firstly i will present you my team then i will give you our analysis of the company some of our recommendation and finally i will give you a quick conclusion of the presentation So firstly my teammates are Gabriela and Stephanie from the US, Nichaye from Thailand, Monifa from Jamaica, Wilfred from Canada and me Andrea from France. Now let's have a quick view on the our SWOT analysis. For the strengths, the restaurant provides a lot of variety, comfort and reasonable prices. The location is also good because it's close to the business center and touristic attractions. Now the weaknesses If there is too many recipes to prepare for the restaurant every day the food is rated therefore the client must not know about this point because the food freshness is an important matter for the client so try to hide it as much as possible from your customers or you might lose them and the company is too dependent on tourism as for the opportunities social media might be a great tool for the restaurant development as well as a delivery service because no day this service is a must have 
As many businesses, Trotskismos have a lot of threats to face. For instance, the competitors, the price of materials might also become one, the remote work due to the pandemic, and the low flow of tourists. Now, let's see the recommendation we made on our report. Actually, we thought that reducing the recipes on the menu is an important point, as that way it will be less expensive to produce and time saving. It will be great to relent the delivery service, even if I know that the company had some trouble to put it in place because it was too expensive. Therefore, maybe you could buy a cheaper packaging, for example, you could buy some bags to put the food inside or even do canned food. Another thing you could do is to tell the customers to bring their own to power for the food or include the price of the packaging into the bill. It will be great if you could try to sell your products to local supermarkets and also to schools. So try to build a partnership with them. Personally, I know that in France, that's what some restaurants did and it worked pretty well for them. As bargains always attract customers, try to offer some several discount programs such as daily special discounts, daily special menu, happy hour, uh, student discounts, or even birthday special. It will be great to also create some events and programs via social media and to propose a fidelity card with a reward system. Through the social media, it will be good if the restaurant could show and tell to the people and create empathy about their situation right now. And to really emphasize on how a small business is handling the crisis and how they are struggling to do so and waiting for the customers to come back. Another thing to promote the restaurant, but it's optional. So maybe you could put, uh, you could uh, create an app and maybe also change the logo because we thought that it was quite misleading. The elephant wasn't really representative of a restaurant because we, the first thing that came into our mind when we first saw the logo wasn't a restaurant. However, when you know the story and origin behind this icon, it's not misleading, but I don't think every customer entering a restaurant know the story of the restaurant. So at first, for, for someone who doesn't know the story, they may not think it's actually a restaurant when looking at the logo. If you could optimize the website, it will be great too. The most effective and inexpensive way to promote your restaurant will be to create an app. That way, people will always be reminded of your restaurant each time they see the logo on their phones. Moreover, it will be easier for you to gather information on your customers, tastes, and habits. Here we have some of the logo proposals each one of us made for the restaurant. As you can see over there, there are some similarities between this logo, which are the ring color to symbolize this treasure tenant, and a clear restaurant mention on most of them. Finally, I will give you a quick conclusion on the bad ideas I've presented. So it will be great to reduce the menu size, that way it will be more efficient to produce the menu, and it will be cheaper for you to do so. A FDD card and our delivery service is incredibly important for you to have. And to create some events and programs via social media is also a good thing as it will attract young customers. Therefore, the use of social media is extremely important for your restaurant. And try selling your products to supermarkets and schools. That way, if the delivery service doesn't work, maybe you can try to gain some money from them. Last but not least, another recommendation related to social media will be to show and tell how you are handling the crisis by making the emphasis on how a small business inside the community is struggling and waiting for the customers to come back to them. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. I hope you like it. Very good, Andrea. Congratulations. You did the, you were like a one woman show. Um, great presentation skills. Of course, I should expect this from an MBA student. Um, your pitch was actually very succinct. It was more of a it was more of a pin, a pitch rather than a, a presentation. So congratulations. Congratulations. But we have Andrea's um, team's uh, evaluation. If you guys can please go ahead and vote, and then Raphael will do a quick calculation of who our number one, number two, and number three uh, is. And uh, while we're waiting for Andrea's polls to, um, to be finished, I just wanna say thank you so much to the X Culture community for um, 
engaging with us in, in creating these great opportunities for our college students, our uh, young people, our teenagers, uh, and our professionals as well. Um, I hope that you uh, find as much value in being a part of the X Culture family as, as we do. Uh, thank you very much for my team. Uh, we have an incredible uh, group of young people who help us run this thing. They volunteer their time. Actually, some of them pay to volunteer for us. Um, and also, if, you, if this is your last opportunity for X Culture, Remember that if you're an academy student, there is a farewell event that will be held next weekend. Um, you also have an opportunity to join the coaching program. The coaching program is open to everybody who complete academy uh, and uh, virtual and professional. And also for those of you guys who made friends uh, and really enjoyed your time with your teams, please continue to, uh, to uh, engage with your colleagues because this is an opportunity for you guys to make friends all over the world. Okay, so uh, without further ado, our top three, and by the way, everybody's a winner. If you were selected, you are a winner, but our top three are, Raphael, help me. Paris, Number it's one. the team yeah. 702, and radical. the radical team. The second one is 700 for the F F FSI. And we have a tie with 691 and 148. So we have a tie. So we have four winners. Um, congratulations to everybody who participated, first of all. And then congratulations for our top four teams. And this concludes our presentation today. Thank you so much for joining us. Peace and love to everybody all over the world. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.